Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organizing Podcast. I am your host, Lori Palau, and we are back today talking about one of the most popular areas that we get requests from all the time. And if you haven't figured out what that is, I'm going to tell you, spoiler alert, it's photo organizing. Um, We've done episodes in the past. I don't know if you remember a few months ago, we had one of the founders of, or one of the uh, lead um, team members from Milio on our show. It's been, we've had so many um, like emails and DMs about, the feedback from that show, how much it's helped them. And people are always looking for strategies because it is there just drowning, whether it's your digital photos, your physical photos, things that you inherit from people when people pass away, all of the things. What do I do with it? How do I keep a handle on it? And so I've got a great guest that is going to come on and talk all about it. So joining me is Darla DeMauro, and Darla is, she's actually in the neck of the woods. She's here in Pennsylvania. She runs a uh, an organizing business called Heart Work Organizing, and of course, we'll link up to that. And in addition to being a certified organizer, she's also a certified prof- photo organizer, which is a whole different skill set. Not all professional organizers specialize in photo organizing. And that is somebody who really has the know-how from a technical side of things, as well as the strategy and technical practices to help you get a hold of all of your photos and keep them organized and keep be able to keep up with it as the influx of stuff comes in. And so we're going to really talk all about that. She's also an author and she's a mom and she really wants, to, her goal is to help people be able to tell their story and enjoy their photos. And we talk about this with any type of organization. We want you to enjoy the things that you have. We want you to be able to, to like see them and showcase them and find them when we want them. We don't want them shoved in a box in the back of a closet or basement or garage or attic. And so we're going to, Dara's going to come out. She's going to share her story and give you guys some direction on what to do if you're overwhelmed with your own photo storage. So without further ado, let me welcome Darla DeMora to the show. Welcome, Darla. Thanks so much for having me on. I can't wait to get to it. Yes, I'm really excited because as you know, this is a hot topic and it's something that a lot of people in my space or our space, I should say, really they say, oh, I'll do all kinds of organizing. But when it comes to some of the nitty gritty things like photo organizing, not their jam. Yeah. Photo Um, organizing is very often like the last bastion, you know, it's like even the organized people that we meet uh, say, oh yeah, don't talk to me about photos. I'm not there yet. (laughs) Well, tell our listeners before we dive in, tell our listeners a little bit about you, about your business and how you kind of got into the photo area. Yeah. So I'm a professional organizer, uh, have been for the last 20 years, uh, nearly 20. It's actually 19 years this year, but I'm rounding up because you know, we're that close. (laughs) And uh, so full-time organizer, I have a team of organizers who um, work with me. They are employees. Uh, We just have a wonderful time together. We love organizing everything. We do um, closets, you know, basements, uh, garages, um, kitchens, all the regular stuff that, that organizers do. But we also have a technical specialty in photo organizing. And we've been building that out. I've been building that out for about 12 years now. Um, And when the pandemic hit, you know, that word pivot that we were all doing, we went from being about 80% physical organizing and 20% photo organizing, and we flipped overnight. So 
we were, we had the benefit, my team and I, um, you know, we didn't see each other for five weeks because that's what was going on here in Pennsylvania. You couldn't even go anywhere for five weeks. Um, but then when we came back for the next two years, that's all we did was photo organizing, photo organizing, and more, more photo organizing. Um, now we're back to about 50-50, um, which we love because we love doing both things. And my team has, like I said, we have the technical expertise and the equipment that's required to do photo organizing. So that's us. Um, and people find us the way that most people do through podcasts and, um, you know, Googling and just looking for getting frustrated in the middle of the night and looking for someone to help me organize my, you know, fill in the blank. And today we're talking about photos. No, I love it. And for our entrepreneurs out here, I've always say, especially if you're in the organizing space, diversify your service offerings, diversify your service offerings. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because even if you've got a robust client base and your business is thriving, again, nobody saw a pandemic coming and having some other revenue stream in your pocket is a great way for you to, and I saw, again, so many people do it. And I love the fact that you had already been doing that, even if it wasn't the, a driver in your business, mm -hmm. it, you were able to have that and then you could really lean into it. So just from a business perspective, I love that. Um, but then also, again, we were all at home during the pandemic, not being able to leave, surrounded by ourselves, trying to figure out projects that we can do. And I know for myself, so, like personally, like I have had my own, like, I'll get to that, whether that was my attempt at scrapbooking when my kids were little or, you know, other things that I thought, oh, I'm going to do that when, when I have the time, when you I know, have the time it, when things slow days. down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So when the yeah. world stopped turning, yes, uh, we gave people a couple of weeks and then we called all of our, you know, favorite clients and said, so, you know, that project you said you would do when you had the time, well, we've had nothing but time for weeks and months now. And how far along are you on the photo organizing? And they all went, yeah, can I ship that to you? Can I drop it off? Can you come get it? Because it's, you know, the world has stopped and I literally have no interest in doing it even now. Um, or, you know, I got so far in the project, like I opened it up, got overwhelmed, shut it back down and come get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you bring up a good point and that is perfect segue into my next question, which is yeah. when we're talking about photo organizing, there's kind of two distinct areas and you can talk about how they kind of work together yeah. and what the distinct differences is, but you have your, all the digital photos that we've got mm -hmm. on our devices on, you know, our camera rolls on social media, wherever we have it. And then we have the backlog of physical photos, yeah. which for many of us, it is past stuff, right? We're not doing right. as much, but yeah. there could be boxes and boxes and boxes of physical photos. Yep. Yeah. So. And uh, depending on your age, you'll have more or less of that, right? So the iPhone was uh, developed and, and introduced in 2007. So somewhere in the 2000s, most of us went to digital photography on a standalone camera and then somewhere past 2007, because most of us were not early adopters on the iPhone. Um, but that's somewhere past there is when you went to, oh yeah, I'm taking more pictures with my camera, my, my phone than I am with my actual camera. So somewhere between you know, 2000 and 2010-ish is where people um, mainly switched over. Um, but here's the thing, nobody taught us how to do that. We just started taking pictures and we started taking a heck of a lot of them and um, we put the print pictures aside and now we're taking more and more photos every day. And if you remember back, so, some people don't even remember this, but I remember when film came in 12, 24 or, or 36, 36 per roll, right? Yeah. And I would save that last, I don't know about you, Lori, but I would have a roll of usually 24 and I would save that last picture, those last two pictures, just in case I needed it. Like I wouldn't finish the roll, right? You'd, you'd leave one on the camera just in case you needed to take a picture on the fly. Um, so that film might be on your camera for months before it got developed. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's how I did it. And then when you got it developed, it went away for a couple of weeks, came back, and then you had exactly 24 pictures in your hand to develop, <laughs> you know, well, to do something Well, with. you know what I would do? I don't know about you. So- Back when I was a young adult, I lived in New York. And so I used to get my 
pictures developed at Dwayne Reed, which is yep. like the, which is like the uh, yep. pharmacy. Walgreens, yep. yeah. Yeah, Walgreens, CVS, whatever. So I would, and they had free duplicates. Duplicates. Get yeah, duplicates. Yep. So then you would have double pictures. Yeah. And it was like, okay, I went on vacation. We did something. We did, and we had an event, a, a birthday party or whatever. You take pictures. Now you have double. And sometimes I would like give them away, but then you were having this. And I was a big, I put them in a photo album, but a lot of people, it's like, what do you do with that? Right. And the thing is back then we paid for everything. We paid for the film. We paid for the developing. So when we got those photos back, none of us wanted to throw anything away because we paid for it twice. Now, flash forward 20 years, I can take, and then this is no joke, I can take 24 pictures before breakfast some days, you know? 100%, yeah. And I'm not paying for them. Um, so I'm, I'm taking more and more and more and more and more. Um, and it, I, many days, you know, I just don't have the time to go back and say, well, of those 24 that I took, there's only, you know, four good ones. So I'm going to delete the other ones. Right. Um, so we are in this world now where we have the older print photos and VHS tapes and, uh, you know, discs and all these other things that we had back in the day before we had what we have now. And then we have the photos that we call the photos that are born digital. So the ones that we take on our phone, okay, or somebody sends us mm -hmm. through social media or email or something else. So those are born digital. So you're right. There are kind of two universes. And for a while, people could deal with those, right? They were thinking, I'm going to organize my prints and I'll put them in the closet. And then I've got my phone and I know what's on there. Well, in reality, what's going on now? People don't want two photo collections. They want one photo collection. Because if I want to share a picture of, I don't know, me as a kid or a teenager or whatever, I don't want to have to dig through the closet to find that. I want to flip through my phone, which is where my photos are today, right? Uh, so there was an interim period where most people were trying to get them onto the computer. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. So it was like, okay, I'll scan a few or I'll get them developed by Dwayne Reed or Walgreen or whoever. Um, and they, and I get a disc back and then I load them onto my computer. And then maybe if I want to do something with my photos, I go to my computer later. Well, in reality, what we're doing today is most people want them on their phone because that's where they first consume them. The second place where they'd like to see them is on their computer because maybe they're doing, making a book or something where they want a bigger screen to mm -hmm. manipulate the photo with, um, or to share batches, that sort of thing. So, um, so what we do, what we do mostly when we're organizing is we help people under, um, you know, kind of get to, okay, what do you want to do first? Cause you have two collections. We want to make it one, but we have to start somewhere. So again, a lot of this depends kind of on the age. Um, I find that if you're, and I'm going to make a large distinction here, please painting with a broad brush. Yes. Um, but if you're over 50, you tend to be more comfortable handling the physical photos, right? Because they're physical, they're in front of you, you can see them, you put them on the left side of you or the right side of you, you know where they went, right? right. Um, the, the younger crowd, let's say again, broad brush, under 50, they tend to want to start with organizing their digital photos because they know where they are, but maybe they're not all in the same place or they're not well-versed in the, the container, the database that they're sitting in, or they're using several different, or they have used several different storage places over time, like Google Photos. And it's, you know, some photos were on this computer, some photos were on that computer, some photos were on disk, and then I got a new phone. And so I'm very comfortable with digital, but they're in a bunch of digital spots, right? Um, so it doesn't matter. There isn't one right way to start. It's kind of what you're most comfortable with. So there's the physical collection. If you want to start there, great. You can often do a lot of organizing yourself within that photo collection. One very easy thing is actually what you said is to go in and remove the duplicates because you know that you don't need to keep duplicates going forward. You also don't need to keep negatives. Um, you know, the, uh, that was a big thing, right? That's a big hurdle to get over. Cause for a long time, again, we paid for those. They came out of the camera. 
they are the original. Don't you mean I should keep them forever? But in reality, uh, you know, again, we have the technology to make really good scans off of the prints today. So why do you need the negatives? People don't. Um, and it took me a long time, even as a professional photo organizer, to be able to say that with a straight face to people. I used to kind of hedge and say, well, what do you think? And, you know, a professional photographer would say, you never delete your, or, or um, throw out your negatives, but you can, you, you absolutely can. And especially if you're in a downsizing mode, there's no reason to keep your negatives because you're not using them. So I, I agree. And it's so funny. It makes me think. So a few years ago, we converted over our uh, wedding video, which was on VHS because yeah. we've been married 25 years. And I had all of our pictures because again, totally different. We had the, we had a stack of photos that were unedited that were, that were sent to us and we picked which ones we wanted to put in our yeah, album. Those are the proofs, but right? The I photographer's had, proofs. Right. I had all the negatives and I was holding on to them. They were literally like in the safe with my passport and birth certificate and marriage license. And I was like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. Like, what am I going to do with these? My kids were like, yeah. what is this? They didn't even know what it was. Right. And I finally, and even I, who's a big purger, don't struggle with emotional clutter at all or very minimally. Right. I had a moment of pause of like, can I get but what if? Like, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I get it. I, I totally get it yeah. now. So I think one of the, it's very time consuming. And I think, I think that's a really big factor yeah. for people yeah. is the time. And then you layer in so-and-so passed away. So it's, and you get all these box yeah. inherited photos. Yeah. Um, well, the starting point is what are you trying to accomplish? Right. So that's always our starting point with any organizing project, right? You don't want to, it's the same. We could say the same thing about closets, very time consuming to organize your closet. Well, what is, what is your goal? I'd like to get ready easier in the morning. I'd like to know how many wool sweaters I have. I'd like to know that the critters aren't, you know, the moths aren't eating my wool sweaters, you know, um, that we have a goal whenever we go to organize a closet, a part of our house, the garage, whatever, same thing with photos. So saying I need to organize my photos is not super helpful, but if you have a milestone anniversary or you have a downsizing event, you know, your parents are moving and they're giving you their photos or you're moving, you, you're going to be going to a smaller footprint or maybe just a different footprint. You won't have the same kind of storage facilities you have now. Um, maybe you've got, as one person last week called me and said, you know, I've got stuff in my basement. I have like water, maybe potential water damage in my basement, or I want to build a cedar closet in my basement. I don't want to be giving up that space to things I'm not using anymore. Um, and that's where I'm keeping my photos. By the way, if you've got your photos in your basement, your attic or garage, hopefully the one thing you take away from this phone, this podcast is going out and getting them out of your basement, your attic, and your garage. Your photos and your VHS tapes and your uh, visual memorabilia, all your media, they want to live in the same space that you're living in, okay? Mm -hmm. Ideally, they would live in your living room because they're nicely organized and it's something that you want to look at from time to time. But if that's not the case, then maybe a closet in a guest room or the top shelf of your closet, something like that, okay? Um, but yeah, taking out the photo collection and saying, I'm going to organize it without having a strong goal is going to be frustrating. It's going to be time consuming for no real benefit. So that is the first thing is to, to define what you are trying to accomplish. Um, you know, sadly, there are times when, you know, you're going to be losing, a maybe a heritage family member and, you know, somebody grandma's getting old or uh, somebody's sick in the family, that often can be the jumping off point for getting your photos organized so that that family member can share the stories and the information about the people with you um, before those stories are gone forever. Um, but there could be happy you know, situations too, a baby book, putting together a baby book or um, the baby's graduating from high school. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, That's a good sure. time to finish the baby book. Right? Oh my gosh. Well, it's, you know, I think this is so great. And if anybody's watching, you know, I'm taking, I'm always taking notes. I'm wondering, I think for so many people, again, it's, I don't even know who all these people are when you have like older photos and 
that could be like a sticking point. So I guess there's no right or wrong way to like approach it, but like, do you have a specific rule of thumb of like, we should do by, you know, by person, by generation, I guess it's going to vary. But if somebody's starting Absolutely. out, it's like, I'm not sure. I know I should start with my goal, which is yep. huge. And then where do you go from there? Yeah. So we, again, I've been doing photo organizing for um, over a dozen years. And in that time, the technology has changed. The, um, you know, even the field of genealogy, which is closely linked with what we do. I am not a genealogist. Um, hats off to all of you. But uh, what we do is closely linked and actually can support a lot of genealogy work. Um, but so in that time, we have organized photos different ways according to what clients have requested. But we have standardized to only organize photos by timeline. Okay. And what that means is chronology. So the oldest photos go, you know, we've, we've got collections going back to the late 1800s. Um, so we get these photos in and if we, if we don't know for sure, but we know it's probably 1880s, 1890s, you know, start dating those photos in groups, um, going back to, uh, as, as far back as you can go. And then also, um, put photos in, um, in order by year. And then if you don't know the year guaranteed, you'll be able to peg a decade. I was just going to say, can you, even if you don't know that you could probably, yes. if it's an image with cars or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You could be like, oh, I know that was probably yeah. in the thirties yeah. or whatever. We often date photos by skinny ties or wide ties, you know, how big the hair is, how high the skirt is, the cut, the uh, cars in the background, all sorts of things. There's all sorts of clues in there, even though the photo might not have something written on the back when it does, that's great. Um, sometimes the information on the back of the photo is not even right. <laughs> so mm. I can remember we had a collection come through uh, not long ago and uh, we had the same picture for this little boy, the same exact picture had um, first grade and then two completely different ranges of years. So it had like, you know, 1978 to 1979, but then the other one, same picture had 1979 to 1980. And we called the the woman you know, to say, um, we really need to, you know, have a, a date. Um, and then once you have the photos arranged by year, it starts to make a whole lot of sense. Now, I know that people do want to, they will often call us and say, I'd like to separate out my, my photos by child. You know, I have two kids. I want to give both of them their pictures. That never works because as soon as that second kid comes along they're in together. the photos, they're all yeah. in the all pictures all the time together. So there's no real easy way to separate um, physical photos like that. So what we recommend instead is to get your photos into chronological order. And that is still the very first step. Again, people will say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that after I throw out all the bad pictures. But here's the thing. You don't know what the bad pictures are until you get all of them together. And also the bad pictures may have some really important data that will help you tag and um, and date the better pictures that for whatever reason don't have that data on them. So again, we don't want you to go through, we don't want you to go through your collection and try and find the bad photos and throw them out and then try and organize. Trust me on this, just when I say this, you gotta listen. Organize your photos first into chronology and work with what you have there before you start throwing things out. Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. And when you think about it again, we talk a lot about decision fatigue here. And when you are making that decision of, is this bad? What, what determines it bad? Like is one person have their eyes closed? Is, is it a little blurry? Like we're using all of this and we're expending all this energy to make these decisions. Not only is it slowing the process down because we're making, having to make these decisions, but we're getting tired, you know, we're, exactly. because we're doing this where what you're saying is, and it still requires some level of mental bandwidth for yeah. sure, uh -huh. but it's hopefully less of a decision that to just say, okay, we're just going to, we're grouping all the black shirts together. We're not yeah. going to decide which ones we're getting rid of. We're just putting all the black shirts. 1000%. Yes. Because when somebody who owns those pictures, who was in that history, when they are trying to organize their photos um, completely, 
and they have not, you know, heard the podcast, <laughs> um, they're, they're going through all of these mental and emotional gymnastics about like, oh, I remember that, you know, that picnic and that was before grandma passed away. And, oh, there's that uncle that I don't particularly like hanging out with, or, you know, I had such fun, like there's all these mental things going on while you're looking at the photos themselves. And actually this is what surprises people a lot. A photo organizer can actually physically organize your photos um, in a lot less time than you can. Which is makes sense, but it also seems counterintuitive. Right. right. Like, how do think- you know who my people are and how do you know what dates they are? That's the question we get most is how, how, do, how can you do that? Cause you weren't there. Listen, you know, I've, I've lived life. I know what the hairstyles were. <laughs> I know, you know, I know what the prom themes were. Um, you know, I could tell whether it's black and white or color or, you know, all these other things that I can, I can actually organize those photos a lot faster than you can. And then going from there, I can then help you decide about the quality of the photos, right? Um, But but a photo organizer is doing actually one thing really well, very fast. So we're putting them in a timeline and then we're deduplicating. And then we're choosing uh, to curate or not curate, depending on what the client wants. And that's picking the best of the best photos, right? So we're doing one thing at a time very fast instead of getting lost in that emotional, you know, soup. Absolutely. I love it. All right, Darla. So I, I often tell people like, I'm not a product pusher, right? Like I'm not here to necessarily endorse anybody. I mean, yes, we have paid sponsors and all the things, but I'm just asking from a purely like editorial perspective, are there certain products that what I guess when we're talking, well, we could do both digital and physical mm-hmm. that you recommend that make the process easier or on the flip side, things that you should avoid. Like I know you could go to any number of places you could Google it and it's like, get these acid free photo archival boxes. Like, is it really better than going to Michael's and just getting a big uh, shoe box and putting it in? Yeah. Absolutely. And I'd love to talk about uh, or to share with people what you can do versus what you ought maybe not to try to do. Because the first thing a lot of people ask me is what scanner should I buy? And Mm. I got to say none, because by the time you buy a scanner, let it sit in your closet for 18 months before you ever even break the seal it's halfway to being um, obsolete at that point. Um, scanners are very, very fussy animals. You can do one thing to it. It'll be cranky and never work right for you. We have basically, basically my full-time job is keeping my scanners happy. We have like seven in our office <laughs> and, uh, wow. you know, keeping them happy and well-fed is, is a big part of my job. Um, but let me, so that's not where we start. We don't start with, you know, scanning. And that, by the way, is not the first step to organizing your photos. It's way down the road. And it's also not the end. It's a means to an end. It's a mean means of bridging that gap from the physical photos to the digital, like we were talking about. But let me give you a surprising, and uh, I think it might cost you 99 cents tool to help with the organizing. Love it. Okay. okay. What is that? This is a little index card. I buy them like in pallets during back to school season (laughs) because they're always on sale. Um, But we have just customized this. You don't have to print them up like I do. We we do it for here in the office so that we can work through our process. But um, you can just use them to make notes on your physical batches as you organize them, okay? Um, And we just put them behind each batch. You can put them in front or behind. There's a specific reason we put them behind so that they don't get lost with the smaller pictures. Um, But it's just a way to say, okay, this batch is whatever this year is or particular date, Um, whatever we write on the um, top of the index card that becomes the file name or the folder name for the files that uh, might eventually get scanned. And then we have just a little checkbox of whether these photos were sorted, scanned, and metadata handled, and then maybe some notes that we need um, about this. So that is something that you can easily um, do yourself. You don't have to print them up, but just just, um, regular old uh, index cards. 
And then people are always asking me about what do we do when we want to write something on a photo on the back of a photo, you can use a regular old ink pen. I'm holding up for the uh, audio audience. Yes. <laughs> I'm just holding up a regular um, ballpoint pen, not a gel pen, not a Sharpie. Okay. If you write very lightly on the back of your photo, if there's something that you do want to write, um, just do it with a regular, you can use a, um, like a number two pencil, but those can, you know, over time they can kind of rub off too. So I like just a regular old ballpoint pen. Mine happens to be purple. You can choose whatever color, but those two tools will get you quite a ways in your organizing, uh, your physical collection. Okay. Um, you had a question. No, I was just going to say it was more of a comment. My mom was a big like labeler of photos. And so I just, again, that was a behavior, like that was something that was modeled to me. So once yeah. I started having my own kids, I would say, you know, Zoe year one, because back in the day, I'm dating myself, people, we used to take our kids to like Sears and Sears. get pictures taken, JC pennies <laughs> and take our kids. And so it would be yeah. like Easter three years old. Yeah. And like, that's what we would do. And so I got in the habit of doing that because over time you're looking back and you're like, was she two? Was she three? Kind of like that right. picture that you had a question about, like, was it first grade? Was it second grade? Yeah. It all blurs together. Fast yeah. forward a decade, two decades, three decades later. Yeah. And you know what? The thing that I always say about when you, when you lose the, that particular detail that you're talking about right now, the thing that I always say is, look, when you're, when you're organizing your photos that are 10, 20, 50, almost a hundred years old, it's better to be mostly right than completely wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah, so like the difference that. between her being 18 months and two years is not even important at this point, right? right. It's a cute picture of her as a kid, right? <laughs> her as a toddler or whatever. But the different when you're organizing, this is where a lot of people just throw in the towel and go, I can't do this, right? The difference between her being one and two, it's not going to be material in the big scheme of things. But right. If you have a kid, as many of my clients do, who is approaching their senior year and you want to do some sort of a retrospective or a, a, something to honor them, you know, being able to put your hands on those photos, whether it was one or two years old, being able to put your hands on those photos is more important than that level of detail, right? I, I say my catchphrase, which now my assistant says all the time back to me, like I is I talk about everything in the ease of retrieval. How quickly can you get it yeah. when you need it? And for me in our family, I don't want to be the gatekeeper. Right. I want when my, and I, I've told the story before when Zoe, my older one was a senior in high school and she was doing a me through the years. She went to her photo box of her as a basketball player and was able to quickly without even having to involve me, yeah. a, a whole like lineage of this was the, you know, team snap photo from first to eighth grade or whatever. Right. So it was awesome because she found it and it didn't involve me, which right. was great. Love it. So you said the magic word photo box. You, you asked me about some products that I we did. like. Yeah. This is one it's hard to get on screen. Cause it's, um, <laughs> it's a good size here. Yeah. It's basically the size of maybe a little bit bigger than two shoe boxes. Yep. I'm going to open it up. Um, this is something that you would, would be able to purchase if you were working with a photo manager. It's not like available on Amazon or anything like that. Okay. Um, but we love it. We use it with all of our photo projects because inside it's got this oversized envelope, but I'm going to tip it up here. So you it can looks see. like, it looks like almost, okay. So I'm going to describe it for people. Mm -hmm. So there's big file section. So picture a filing cabinet, right? Divider like, sections. Yeah. Divider and they come sections. out. Oh, I love it. So each yeah. one has its own like little, yep. Like little a box section. in a box. There's, ten, there's 10 sections in here and it comes with, uh, these are wrapped up, but they're, yep, um, I see them, uh, file tabs yep. so inside. So you've got 10 sections inside and in inside each section, you can have as many tabs as you want to create your sections. About how many photos fit in each one of those sections? Uh, the whole box holds 2,400 
um, five by five by uh, uh, four by six, five by seven. By six. Oh, wow. <laughs> So yeah. that's, so if you were divided, so like 240 photos per box, if you yes. were divided, yes. right? Yeah. And the important thing is, um, we like the way that it looks. It is pretty and it is it something is. that you can have in your home instead of in your storage area. So it's not, you know, it's not just another plastic box that you're going to want to put someplace else. Um, and it's also, it's photo safe. It's actually made for photos okay. and it does hold the five by seven photos. So you could get something that that's literally called a photo storage box at Michael's or Joanne's or wherever. And I have those, I own them. It's that's totally fine, but they're not supposed to be used for storage for photos. First of all, even though they say photo storage box on it. Um, and secondly, those boxes only hold four by sixes. So the minute you get the right. little bit larger photos, the, the five by sevens, they don't. Or fit. an eight by 10, like when you're little. I mean, deal. again, going back yeah. to the old school people, like we used to get, you get the, the package yeah. and it was the eight by 10. So how, okay. So I'm going to ask another geeky or so this is question. the um, envelope oh. that comes inside the box. So you can store not only the four by sixes, the five by sevens, but you can also store a, uh, a decent amount of the larger oversized photos or newspaper clippings or whatever you want to. Okay. As well. I have another question. Yeah. So how big overall footprint is that diameter or the depth of that box? Like, does it fit on the shelf? Is it more than 16 inches or? It does. Um, it does fit on most shelves. Um, it's going to fit in, you know, it, it is heavy once it's loaded. I'm sure. So it's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know exactly how much, how many pounds. And I, sorry, I don't know the uh, dimensions right offhand, but it's okay. basically like two really large shoe boxes, gotcha. not quite the size of a boot box. Well, it's a little bit bigger than one boot box, but smaller than like two boot boxes. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. Um, so it's a good size, you know, my, my grandmothers that we, that we do these projects for, you know, I don't want them putting it overhead because it's, it's hard to get off the shelf overhead when it's loaded, but, um, but it's great for, you know, people who aren't sure how many photos they have. And they come in with these, they come into our office with the, the big box, you know, like sterilite bins or Rubbermaid bins. Of and, course. Yeah. You know, full of albums. Well, we take stuff out of albums because the albums from the 60s, 70s, 80s are actually damaging our photos anyway. Oh my gosh. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We take them out. So we get them ready for scanning. And usually um, our family collections can go in between I don't know, I'm going to say between one and 10 of these boxes, right? We have a lot of family collections that only need one box, 2,400 right. photos. Sure. And then we have bigger collections as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I love it. Now I know so that's the physical. Okay. Okay. We've spent a lot of time on physical. So yeah. let's, let's move over. And we got the and digital. Just, and yeah. And we probably aren't going to be able to go as in depth. Maybe we'll no. have to do something else, but we'll give us Give us some insight and tips about the digital. So this always surprises people, but we do recommend when you're going to do a photo organizing project that you get your hands on an external hard drive. They cost about a hundred bucks. The one I'm holding up is red. I do not care what brand you get. It does not matter to me if it's a Seagate or WD or LSE or um, Toshiba or whatever. It does not matter. They all produce about the same result and they're all about the same reliability. Um, but these cost about a hundred dollars. Uh, it's a great way to extend the size of your computer, whether you're working on a Mac or a PC. Um, and you often will need that much room. Uh, we recommend that you start with a five terabyte, four terabyte at a minimum, but five terabytes, a good, uh, good bet. And, um, you might say to yourself, my goodness, I'm never going to use that. You will over time. But you might need that amount of space to move things around, especially if you have, like you said, your old wedding videos or any type of uh, anything that's gotten put onto disc or, um, or you know, real films, anything that's media that's not photos. Um, there's another thing, sorry, this looks a little messy as I'm holding it up, but yeah, there's a tag good. that we attach to the little USB drives. We also have USB drives. These are not good for projects. They are great for the final result. Maybe if you do the photo organizing and you want to share a copy out with all the cousins and siblings, that's a great way to get it out as a gift. And we have, when we do our projects, we actually put on there a really big, um, annoying tag compared to the size of the, um, the drive 
because we want people when they throw that drive in a drawer, we want people to remember, oh, that's our photos. Don't, you know, record over that. <laughs> exactly. Or lose it. Like, what is that? I yeah, what is that? that is. Oh, I can use that for, you know, whatever document. Um, and then we do recommend um, the two digital platforms that we use most often. One is for anyone that has an iPhone. And uh, certainly if you have an iPhone and a Mac, start using Apple Photos. It's surprising how many people are not using Apple Photos or they're not using it to the fullest extent. Okay. Um, if you have an iPhone and a PC, or if you have an Android and a PC, we love pointing you towards Mylio. And you actually recommended them earlier, um, but Mylio is our trusted platform that we really recommend for a whole lot of people. It takes a minute to set it up, but then it does many of the things that the Apple um, Photos ecosystem do does. And um, it just really, it gives you so much. It's like, it's like putting your photos on steroids. You know, you could, you could do so much organization without actually having to spend a lot of time to do it. So you can do things like, and this, the mom's always like this when I say this, wouldn't it be nice if you could say, give me all the photos of me and my favorite child and the dog. And that's it. I'm just kidding. Cause I know we don't have a favorite child. We're not allowed to have that. <laughs> but, Depending but, on the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me and kid number one and the dog. Those mm -hmm. are all the pictures that I want. Well, for you to go through a photo collection, look for all that. It could take you hours, days, weeks, years, right? You could ask the computer to do that and get a response in a couple of seconds. Okay. So that's the power of a really good photo management system. And you wanna be able to use that, um, it's AI, but it's also more, you know, it's just database, what databases do well. And it's um, slicing and dicing that information or saying, you know, the three times that we went to Hawaii, I wanna be able to see all of those three Hawaii trips, um, both separately and together. You know, the computer can do that in a matter of seconds. And we want, um, we, we wanna use that uh, power when we can which is again, incredible yeah. and somewhat overwhelming. And depending again, going back genera by generation yeah. and I'm stereotyping, it's like you have your digital natives that that is like, oh, that's so cool. I can't wait to try it. And then you've got somebody that is like maybe a Gen Xer and depending on where they fall, they might be like, that seems a little overwhelming and intimidating to me. Yeah. So yeah. And, and really, where are you going to go to find out how to organize your photos? It's, it's not an industry that really is very mature. Um, you know, I am a certified member of a group, an international group called The Photo Managers. I've spent a dozen years, you know, me and my colleagues um, really honing in on both the physical and the digital skills around photo organizing. And that's what we do. So I never want anyone to feel, you know, sad or disgusted in themselves because they don't know how to do something on their phone. Like, when were you supposed to learn this? This is my full-time job. I have employees and this is their full-time job to know this stuff. So we, you know, we spend a lot of time training people, um, giving them just an hour at a time. That's usually our, you know, uh, remote appointments and helping them get the best use out of these you know, I always laugh. People, people go buy a $2,000 Mac and then they use it to check their email. <laughs> it does so much more than that. There's so much computing power there. So, you know, learn a little bit about how that Mac or, or PC for that matter, you know, how it works and then let the computer do the hard work for you. You get to enjoy the, you know, the, the photos. And that's really what we want you to get to. We want you to play with your photos. We want you to be able to find the, you know, the, the, kindergarten pictures of your daughter, you know, when, when she has it for, uh, has a need for a school event or, you know, somebody getting married or having a graduation or a 25th anniversary coming up, you know, so be able to put your hands on those photos so much faster. That's going back to what you said before that, that is really gold. I love it. I, I love it. I think that is so great. So I think that's a perfect time to like, let everybody know where can they find you? Because obviously, like you said, you don't just work with people locally. You do work with people remote. And I think everyone's probably going, oh my God, I need you in my life. <laughs> so where can people learn more about you and connect up? Let me just say, I think everybody needs a professional organizer in their life. So, you know, if you, if I am not the one for you, please, I'm going to give a plug for NAPO. You can find professional organizers 
who will come and organize your closets and kitchens and garages and other spaces. And those people are always at napo.net. Of course, I'm there as well because uh, I'm a NAPO uh, organizer, a proud member. And uh, the other organization that I belong to is The Photo Managers, and it's thephotomanagers.com. Um, so I'll give them a plug. But I would love to work with anyone who's heard me on this podcast and you know wants to go to the next level with their photos. And we do. We work with people all over the country. We have people um, ship us photos. We have a safe way to do it. So don't worry. You know, We will coach you through that. But we have clients sending us photos from um, California, you know, um, Minnesota, Vegas, all over, uh, Kentucky, Ohio, Florida, all over, and uh, even Canada. And we will work with you remotely. And you don't have to do both, right? If you're like, I'm good on the digital, I just need you to organize and scan my photos. Great. We will do that. The thing that we do um, that other people don't is we will actually... Laura, you were talking about metadata earlier, the stuff on the back of the photo. Yes. You know? Yes. That in the digital world, that's called metadata. And we actually put that on the photo, the digital photo as well. And then we actually upload it to where it needs to go to. And then we'll teach you how to use it. So all of that, you can find me at heartworkorg.com. That's my website. Um, we're, we're out there. We're every place. We're on just about every social media, Instagram, Pinterest, all of that. Um, if it's, you know, if working with me in one-on-one is not in the cards for you, I have a recorded classes. And of course I have my book. Is it all right if I flash my book? I flash the book away. We didn't even talk about go. that, but it's called <laughs> Sort Succeed. Yeah, Sort and Dar Succeed. Oh, Sort and Succeed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, the and was small. Sort yeah. and Succeed. Um, love it. And we are going to, of course, link to all things Darla on in our show notes, as well as on our podcast page on our website. So if you're out and about walking, driving, doing whatever, exercising, don't worry about it. We will we we've got you covered. So yes. do not fret. All right. This hour has completely flown by. I feel like I have a thousand more questions, but you have given first of all, I think you've just spelled a lot of like fear and overwhelm of like, where do I even begin for this daunting project? So thank you, if for nothing else, than to just really making the seem doable for us. I really, really appreciate it. And again, I'm already thinking of people that I know that I'm like, this would be a great, um, a great gift to be able to give to somebody, you know, to say, Hey, so just thank you so much for the work that you do. Okay. So aside from your book, um, we always love to know, pick our guests brain about a book that they either are currently reading, or maybe a book that they've read that has been really impactful in their life, whether it has to do personally, it could be a business book, doesn't really matter, funny, serious, you name it. Something that you want to share with our listeners. Can I give you one personal and one um, business? Absolutely. Um, uh, so many books. I'm a big reader, so okay. ton of books. Um, and by the way, if you need an organizing book, go to my website because I set up a page of organizing books, not that I wrote, but there's, I, there's at least 50 on there, probably more. Um, that other NAPO members have written. We were having a, a hard time finding them all in one place. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to put it all together on one page. So you can go to my page and buy somebody else's books. How's that? Love it. Love it. Um, love, love people supporting other people. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, there's so many interesting books being written on topics that I am not qualified to write on. I mean, there's just, you know, so many like very niche um, uh, organizing topics. And so go find one of those books. But um, from a from a business standpoint, I always go back to the classic, um, The E-Myth Revisited, uh, okay. which is by Michael Gerber, I think. And uh, it's just a really good, if you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to, whether you're in corporate right now and you sort of want to strike out on your own, or maybe you have a business idea and you're trying to figure out, you know, Maybe you want, you love baking and you want to become, you know, open a big bake shop. Well, there's a lot to it. Um, I actually love running my business as much as I love doing the work in the business. Um, but that the, the E-Myth Revisited is just really a great book. Um, so that's on the business side. And then I'm going to shout out to um, the book called All the Light We Cannot See. Have you heard of this book? No. 
Okay. So I just finished reading it this week. I've read it. I, I read so very few books twice in my life, but this one I actually read about 10 years ago and it's coming out as a movie on Netflix. Uh, it's coming out as a movie. I think it's on Netflix. I'm not sure. Um, and I, I heard that it was coming out. So I wanted to go read it again. And it's by Anthony. I don't know how to say his last name. Dor, I think it is D O E R R something like that. Okay. Um, and it's about the, it is a world war II book, but it's, it's more about the people than the, you know, I'm not right. about the battles and who was fighting where and whatever. Um, it takes place in France, which people who follow me know that I'm a Francophile and I sp speak French and go to France every chance I get. Um, but it's a, it's a life affirming, sweet, terrifying, you know, amazing book. Um, and I actually think it's really good to read right now in this time that we are in where we have two active wars in the, you know, kind of Western world. Um, so I think if you read it today, it will have kind of a layer of, um, of, of importance based on where we are right now in 2023. Sure. Sure. Well, so. thank you for, sh thank you for sharing that. I really, I really appreciate those. And of course we'll link to those as well in our show notes. And then our last two questions, which again, can be serious or lighthearted, however you want to answer it all has to do with authenticity and honesty. And even as organizers, we know that there's always an area that we might be struggling with or putting on the back burner because other things are taking priority. So Darla, in the season of your life, where do you feel the most organized and where do you feel like a little bit of a hot mess? Um, I feel pretty organized in just about every, you know, area ish. Um, I have two teens at home and I'm married and where I think we are struggling as a family right now is that we've got four people um, and a school system that is not communicating very well. Uh, so we've got, you know, calendar chaos a little bit. Um, we do have a way to manage that, but the kids are, you know, they're, they're learning, right. They're learning how to manage, um, manage a calendar, manage expectations. And also they're learning what's good communication and what's not because our, our school system right now is quite frankly, failing in a lot of ways too. They need, um, they need an organizer in there. They need, an, or they need a communicator. They need somebody to help. Yeah. Get the calendar together because they're literally like giving, sending out messages the day before, like, Oh, your kids are off school tomorrow. Like, hang on. <laughs> you know, I have my kids coming home saying there's a, there's an after school event on Thursday. It turns out it's on Friday. You know, it's like oh, it's crazy, crazy stuff. So um, it makes me a little bit anxious because I want no, I want people to be where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. And the calendar isn't coming all together right now. So, you know, I mean, if I'm feeling the struggle and I am an organized person and I read every single email, think how some people are that are not feeling all put together and not being able to read every single email. So it's, um, you know, just, again, you got to give yourself some grace and like, if we miss an appointment, if we miss a pep rally, like the world will not come to an end. It's okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think we have to, like you said, we don't always, I think it's an important lesson because no matter how organized you are, we're at the mercy of other people to some extent with other things. Yeah. And so you could be doing all the right things and I'm air quoting, you know, yeah, yeah. what that looks like of being prepared and proactive. Yeah. But if the people that you need to show up for are flying by the seat of their pants or they're disorganized, it does have an impact on. It does. It on does. You. And, you know, I had somebody ask me this week, like, okay, I hear you're an organizer, but how is your home really? Are you organized? And my answer is always, look, I live with people. So yeah. my home is not a magazine spread 24 hours a day, nor should yours be. You know, we all need to be, our, our home should be our haven. You know, we should be able to have times of the day when we can manage through this calendar chaos and, you know, the, right. We're people are, are troubleshooters. People are, we're problem solvers. That's what people are. Even if you're not thinking of yourself as a problem solver, that's what we are as humans. Um, so it's okay to not be 100% organized every second of the day, but then I hope for everybody that you do have a place to come home to that is restorative that is your haven that you can relax in for at least a few minutes and if not call an organizer and you know get some help creating a space that is restorative and and that you can feel at home in 
I love it. Darla, thank you so much. This has been such a great, great conversation. So much wonderful information. If this is your first time tuning in um, or if your hundred thousandth time tuning in, I don't know, share this episode with someone that you know that can definitely benefit from it because I know we all know people that are struggling with either digital photos or physical photos. So please share this episode. And um, again, if this is your first time being here, make sure to click the subscribe follow button, whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us and whatever your favorite podcast app is. Um, that way you never miss any episodes. So we'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, I'm Lori Plow. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. If this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Like Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B like boy organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.